You guys, Features Gaming here, and welcome back to the last episode of 12 Trains of Christmas, because today is the final episode of this series, and that means it is Christmas Eve. So, Merry Christmas, everyone, to celebrate it for tomorrow. I hope you all have a great day and today I'm going to be doing my basic or, or basically the the service that I promised you all at the start driving the Polar Express. Now if I will be honest I have tried to do this video before but there was a bug with the timetable and I don't know what happened. I was passing a signal at danger apparently and th 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 there was no signal there so no idea what's going on with that, but we're going to try and be doing this service right in front of us. So it says drive the semi-fast service bound for London, Houston from Hartford to Crewe. So that is what we're going to be doing today. So first thing you can know is let's just open the doors. First thing you can know is that it's light outside. And that is because I want you guys to see the... You know, I, I want you guys to see the livery because this is the Polar Express livery. Look at that. So, yeah, it's not replicating the real life movie. I get that. But I want you guys to see the livery because this is a really cool livery. That, I'm guessing, is the date of when the Polo Express was coming out because it was 2007 the film came out but I don't know exactly what day it was but as you can see if we go in here well these are actually the Harry Potter type carriages actually but I'm pretty sure if we go into the next carriage uh well what one of the one of these carriages these are the Polar Express type seats now yes it isn't an exact replica of the seats in the in Polo express but it's probably as close as you know it's probably as close as you're going to get to them and the train all goes all the way down there so we're actually at Axon bridge right now so i don't know what's happening there now the service is only supposed to take about 24 minutes so i'm going to leave this all in even if there's like a really long you know even if, even if there's like a really long drive, I'm going to leave it in. So let's get this train set up for departure. So let's just go ahead and do that. Those brakes should charge up pretty quickly. Nice horn there. So yeah. Let's have a look at the stops that we're going to do. So we're going to be stopping at Winsford and then finally Crow. So I guess we can call this, you know, the Polar Express journey. Because let's say Winsford is going to be... Let's say this station is where they pick up Hero Boy. And then Winsford is that uh, person 134 Edbrook Avenue or thing, whatever it was, the, that thing. Um, that will be that. And then Crew, I guess, would be the Polo Express or the North Pole, actually. Um, we're not going to do the stops for, like, you know, the... Um, the whatever they're called on the, um, on the track. Um, and not the ice cracking, because that will just be, frankly, dangerous. But uh, yeah, we're going to try and replicate most of this this journey. And hopefully that's, uh, as I said, um, an outtake I have been doing off camera. Hopefully I can actually complete this scenario and not fail again. If I fail this one, then I have no idea. A, you won't be able to, you won't even be seeing this episode right now. So if you are seeing this episode right now, then... I can almost guarantee you that we managed to complete the journey. <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave that open because that's how it's like in the movie. So yeah, we just have to wait for all of the uh, all of the people to get on. I guess while we wait, we can kind of, you know, replicate some stuff of the movie. <laughs> well, you come in. <laughs> All aboard! You know that famous movie quote? Yeah, honestly, just from the top as well, you know, it It looks like it as well. 
I mean, as I said, you know, it's not a, no, it's not a, you know, it's not a massive, you know, it's not a, you know, literally identical replica of the train. No, I get that because the actual train in the movie isn't a Jubilee, but it's as close as I think we're going to get it because this is the only livery that there is for the Polo Express uh, made by Ethan, I think. Um, so, yeah. You can't get it exactly correct. I, uh, you know, I think that's pretty much impossible. But it's as close as we're gonna get it. So we're gonna wait till we get going. We've got about three minutes while we wait, or about two minutes. So I guess while we wait, he's just gonna continue putting some coal into the fire, and I'll go ahead in the video until we can get to, to the departure time. So uh, I will go ahead and see you when we are just about to depart. So we are only now seconds away from starting this journey. Only a few seconds now. So I think what we'll do is we'll close the doors. If you're not on, you're not coming to the North Pole. All right. So let's go. We'll put the sander on. We can get some more grip on the train. Come on. Off we go. So 6.9 miles till Winsford. Going to take us a while to get there, I think. But as I said, we're not cutting any of this out because it's not an extremely long journey. So I'm just going to leave it all in. Probably turn the cylinder cocks off now. And we're just going to keep increasing the train power when we can. It's getting a lot of wheel slip, isn't it? Another thing to note as well is that I've got it on light snow as well. I haven't got it on literally snowstorm. I have got it on light snow. So yeah, that is probably one thing that I should mention. Right, let's move the reverses to 20, not 25, 50 I mean. We'll keep increasing the power. I think we can go 100 now. Right, off we go. How good is that? Driving the Polar Express. That could actually be the thumbnail, to be fair, as well. Because that's the way things happen on the Polar Express. A bit bouncy. <laughs> One thing I don't get is we're going 30. I've got the regulator literally on max, but the power thing down here isn't really increasing. So I don't know what's going on. Because I'm pretty sure we should be, you know, we're not really going insanely quick, but you know what I mean? I mean, probably there's something in the train that I haven't set correctly, which is not meaning that this train is reaching its full, you know, capacity potential. But I have no idea what any of these do, so I don't really want to do anything that's going to break anything. But we are still going, so nothing, uh, nothing bad about that. I mean, we're moving, but, you know, and I guess, you know, we don't really want to go insanely fast. But still, we want to go, you know, as quick as we can, I guess.
All of the trees over there. We're due to be at Winsford in about three minutes. Three minutes to cover 5.5 miles? I don't think so, mate. That is, that is never going to happen. You can even see the tracks on the other side as well. They actually join on as well. So where I was like sort of not, you know, not doing the route before, it was like around about like there. I'll try and tell you the exact location when I get closer. But it, it's around here that I kept in you know, like failing. Like failing the scenario. And I don't know why. It was literally like here, I think. Right after this, I kept failing. But as you can see, there's literally like no signals, you know, that screen. I think it was actually, you know, like... No, it was actually a bit... It was actually a bit later on, I think. What I think is happening is that it's thinking that I'm passing a signal that's not actually there. Like, maybe one from a different track. They haven't, like, moved the, uh, moved the thing over. Like this one, for example, but I don't know. Because the station is literally there. And I kept failing. I think it was possibly like in line of these ones. Well, it hasn't done it yet. And this is the station I doesn't need to stop at. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what was happening with the, with the previous scenario. And I even tried it twice as well. Like I even tried two separate timetables. It happened on both of them. So I really don't get what was going on. But we're just gonna keep going to our next destination. Four miles in about a minute. I'm literally not going quick at all. There must be something that I haven't said correctly, like surely, because, you know, I'm pretty sure this train's capability, you know, he's not only just 45. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on. There has to be something I'm doing right, you know, or something I'm doing wrong. But at least if we've got the train moving, that's all that matters. We're just going to be incredibly late. But if any of you know what I'm doing wrong, please do let me know. I'm not applying the handbrake. Shouldn't have done that. What's that? Live injector valve. Is that something I've done wrong? I'm just going to leave that on. I don't even know what that was on. Um, I might leave it on open. I have no idea what I just did there. Right, 2.9 miles. We're supposed to be there by now. But yeah, if any of you know what, what I'm doing wrong, please do let me know and in great detail as well. Like exactly which thing do I need to change? Because I have no idea. I mean, it could be the, the cold or, <laughs> you know, something simple like that. I really don't know what I'm, what I'm doing wrong. There has to be something. I mean, it could be one of these ejectors, maybe, even though I'm pretty sure, what, you know, the video told me to keep the small ejector open and the large ejector closed. Like when we're moving, they've told me, you know, this is the brake pressure it should be. 
and I just don't know how to I just don't know how to get quicker. Right, well we're still 1.9 miles away from Winsford. And then I assume it's going to be a pretty long journey from there to Crewe because as you can see it's like 10 minutes it's giving us and I'm pretty sure with our speed then we're going to be traveling quite a, quite a distance like we might get to Winsford when we're supposed to be at Crewe. Because yeah there, there must be something I'm doing wrong. There has to be. And I'm even going down in like speed as well. Like what what am I doing wrong? There has to be something that I'm not utilizing to my full potential. I mean it's it's probably it's probably the reverser. But I don't know what I need to change. Do I need to go it all the way forward? Do I need to go it all the way back? I just don't know which, you know, which one I need to do. Well, we'll activate some braking now. Twenty percent. As we are approaching. I need a bit more actually. Alright, we might let it release now. Let it slow down a bit more. Catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. Why are we still slowing down? What have I done? Come on. There we go. We're speeding up again a little bit now. We are literally like five minutes late. So there, there, there has to be something I'm not utilizing. There has to be. I anticipated that or over anticipate under I didn't even know <laughs> I'm not I, there's probably only like two carriages on you put that on yeah there's probably like so many like carriages that are not on the platform so we are picking up um Oh, what's his name? What what is his name? Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what his what his name is. Um, the the shy kid. I don't, I don't know what his name is. Uh, does he even have a name? I don't even know if he has. Why is the load passengers not working? Wait, why are we moving? Stop! Is 
Seems like there's a train on the other platform. I think you'll be more safer going on that one. If I'm going to be honest. Right. Let's get going. Off to Crow. Come on. Move. Move. What am I doing wrong? Surely I'm doing something wrong. Like, I've even, like, watched tutorials on how to drive this, and it's still very difficult. That's probably what you, uh, what, what you want to watch for, watching me struggle how to drive this. Or you're probably pulling out your hairs going, fetch, you do this, and you do this. And it's pretty simple, you just do that. Yeah. The thing is, I was not taught that, okay? <laughs> 7.5 7 miles. Yeah, this is actually going to be like another like 20 minutes, isn't it? I might have to speed this up because there's actually going to be nothing that I'm going to do. Uh, so I guess what we'll do now is in the cabins, we'll serve hot chocolate. So servants, do whatever you need to do. Do your dance, like show off thing. Serve the hot chocolate, sing the song, do whatever you need to do. Um, hope, the, hope that we don't have any animals on the on the rail. Um, hopefully we don't have to reuse a hairpin um, to like connect the accelerator and have the other one break ice. Hopefully we don't uh, have um, people walking on the roof and then I get replaced by Hero Girl. Let's hopefully have not, you know, not have that happen. And um, yeah, let's just not have a roller coaster either. Um, I think that would be, uh, I think that would be an achievement, really, if I'm going to be honest. Can we go full power yet? Yeah, we can. Cool. Let's bring the reverser back to the mid position. And now we start the slow acceleration over there. I didn't do the all aboard thing, did I? Oops. <laughs> right, well, as I literally have nothing to say, we're supposed to be there in a minute. We're not going to travel 6.9 miles in a minute. That is not happening. Unless, you know, we are the actual Polo Express and we time travel. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, on the Polo Express, they literally stop time as well. Yeah, that film is both very confusing and fun at the same time. And honestly, I'm not joking you. I will, I might watch the Polo Express app, you know, after, you know, <laughs> after making this video. Because I hope you all enjoyed yesterday's video as well, because we literally were on the Polo Express as a passenger, you know, on that Roblox story game, and now we're driving it. We are literally her hero girl there. <laughs> We were literally on the Polar Express, and now we're driving it. We are literally her hero girl there. Right, well, as I said, I'm probably just going to cut ahead in the video until we are approaching crew, because honestly, I mean, I know I said I'm not going to cut ahead in the video, but honestly, with this journey, I think it's going to need it because... You know, we're going to be driving for our ages and there's literally going to be nothing to do other than sit here and just wait for this to, you know, speed up and stuff. So, yeah, I'm just going to get over there um, and I'll uh, speak to you guys when we're approaching Crow because this is going to take a while. Okay, so we are now 1.2 miles away from Crow and as you can see, I don't even know how long it's taken us, but we are 
eight minutes delayed. Um, I've gotten up to 56 miles an hour. <laughs> That's the maximum I've got this uh, I've got this train up to. Um, and yeah, I, I couldn't get it any quicker. And there's actually a 20 soon, so actually I need to slow down quite a bit, actually. Slow down. I'm going to be overspeeding a little bit. I can I can almost guarantee you that we will be uh, overspeeding quite a bit. Um, so yeah. Now we just need to figure out how to actually stop the train in a good place as well. Because, yeah, I think that's going to be the uh, the hardest part. Plus, actually, where we need to stop, I think, actually determines where we actually place ourselves. Like, where we place the actual thing and not actually the train. Why is it stopping? Come on, speed up, speed up. The regulator's on. Crane, move forward. Now, what are you doing? There we go. Take your time. It's not like, we're, it's not like we've been recording for like 40 minutes so far. Plus, how many of a minute this has taken us to actually, you know, speed up? Take your time. The weather's, you know, the, the weather's cleared up now a little bit. Yeah, I kind of regret doing this in, the, in like, the daytime now because, like, it's so bright now. And that's literally the complete opposite of what happened in the movie. You know, the only thing that's, I guess, okay to this in the movie is the livery. That's literally the only thing. There's nothing else. <laughs> and this station looks nothing like the North Pole. At all. We're just going to keep speeding up, getting into the station, and then we need to pick where we start braking. Eleven minutes delayed. Eleven minutes. In we come. Into Crow. Looks like we just need to head down this, uh, head down this platform. Platform four. How is there a red signal before where this is supposed to end? Oh gosh, that's going to be tricky. I might just like leave it here. Because <laughs> I really do not want to pass that signal. I do not want to pass that signal. So it can't be where we are, surely not. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna risk it. I'm, I'm not gonna stop where I'm supposed to. This is nerve wracking. Okay. I think that was a pretty decent stop as well, to be fair. Signals there. I'm actually all right with that. Let's just quickly put the cylinder cocks on, even though I don't really think it, it matters. But here we are at crew. I think that I think that stop was actually pretty okay. 
look at that. And we've now successfully done the Proto Express route. <laughs> Don't know why it's taking us so long to, you know, do, but, you know, it is what it is. I think the thing told me to stop, like, about here. Oh, I wanted to jump on there and be literally, you know, the conductor and, you know, things like that on the actual Polar Express. The best thing is to all hold on tightly. <laughs> That's when they start the roller coaster. Oh, do I actually need to lock the What do you want me to do more? There we go. Finally, we've managed to stop 2.6 yards. Yeah, I'll, I'm not going to risk that any further. <laughs> so I think it is kind of where the front of the train is then, actually. I think that's actually where you're supposed to stop then, actually, if I'm going to be honest. But there you go. Level 49 on my profile, level 5 on the Spirit of Steam. So as you can see, not very experienced driving this train. And that's probably why... You know, I, you know, I'm untrained of how to drive it quickly. So please do let me know what I'm doing wrong because I have no idea. But as you can see, key statistics, time taken, 37 minutes, 14 miles driven, and I've walked a total of 700 yards. Got a gold score somehow, even though I arrived at Crow 12 minutes late. But there you go. That is going to be the end of this video. So I hope you guys did enjoy it once again hope you all have a very merry christmas tomorrow hope you all get everything that you want from you know santa or you know whatever um but hope you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you all in the next video but until then tell uh, or until then make sure you leave a like subscribe for more content and uh yeah once again hope you have a good christmas and stuff take care and peace out